yesterday we made a video clip on the uh, PAH, pregnancy induced hypertension. That was in Urdu. But uh, for certain medical students and for my audience in abroad, I had to make it in English as well. So it was requested that this should be repeated in, in English language as well. PIH stands for pregnancy induced hypertension. And this is the rise of the blood pressure that occurs in a pregnant woman after 20 weeks of gestation. And the level is above 14090 are more than 90 in diastolic blood pressure especially. And according to second definition, if the blood pressure rises 20 mm of Hg more than her baseline value, then she is also considered a case of pregnancy induced hypertension. And then we talk about its incidence. Basically, PAH is more common in the primary gravida. Its incidence is 10%, but in multi, it is only 5%. So as the pregnancy uh, proceeds, I mean, it comes second or third pregnancy, this issue starts getting, you know, less aggravated. Now, pregnancy-induced hypertension is a very, you know, serious sort of problem that needs to be addressed because there are so many complications in the mother and in the fetus they, that result from it. So, uh, sometimes patient becomes uh, in a category of preeclampsia and preeclampsia is diagnosed when there are a triad of symptoms. That is, number one is the rise of the blood pressure and second is the uh, edema that is swelling of the face and the fingers and the feet and third is the protein urea protein starts coming albumin especially starts coming in the urine of the pregnant lady and that is up to 300 milligrams per 24 hour sample and it's um, you know 30 to 100 milligram per deciliter otherwise and uh, you can check it on the lipstick as well one plus two plus is considered as a uh, protein urea. Now, um, if uh, this blood pressure occurs only in pregnancy and not in a non-pregnant state and not in, uh, uh, I, I mean, before 20 weeks of gestation, uh, only then it is called PAH. If she is already hypertensive before getting pregnant, there are so many other causes for that. And family history also plays a role. There is a genetic predisposition. We have to ask for her obstetric history as well and her past history and her medical history re related to her diab diabetic status, whether she is having diabetes or not, and the previous hypertension and the, uh, I mean, history of uh, uh, preeclampsia in the previous pregnancies. So all these history needs to be taken. Their after examination is very important and the thorough uh, examination is required. And, uh, you know, uh, we have to uh, prevent this pre-eclamptic state uh, to develop into a full eclampsia. Eclampsia is all these three uh, triad of symptoms, that is uh, hypertension, proteinuria and edema, along with PIPs. If the patient starts having pits, convulsions, um, and in, they're so severe that uh, she sometimes cut her tongue as well during these strong tonic-clonic pits. And this results in a very devastating condition and that is potentially fatal in the fetus and in the mother. So it needs to be addressed very vigilantly. And then uh, in PIH, there is 10 to 15 percent chances of um, HELP syndrome. HELP stands for uh, hem uh, hemolysis, hemolysis, and uh, uh, hemolysis and raised enzymes of the liver, elevated liver enzymes, and low platelet count. So when this picture is there, it becomes much swear, you know, in intensity because in this condition, there is a strong predisposition to uh, PPH and uh, there is jaundice in the patient, there is epigastric pain, there is sleeping disorder, there is severe headache and um, 
because of all these conditions, the patient is very critical. And if the C-section is done or it has to be done, then in that case, there is a lot of hemorrhage. So what we need to do? First of all, uh, after history and examination, the investigations are very important. The CBC shows, um, you know, uh, there is a, a platelet count that is less than one lakh per cubic mm and the HB that is important to know uh, for further proceedings. And uh, when we uh, see the urinary for protein urea especially, and there is albumin urea that might be one plus, two plus, three plus. And then we go for the uh, liver enzyme, liver function test. And in that bile is raised, it's almost, uh, almost always more than 1.2 milligrams per deciliter. And uh, um, there could be renal shutdown, renal failure could be there. So it all should also should be addressed. Its complications may be PPH and DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation could be the complication. So that needs to be addressed definitely. Uh, actually, it should be prevented because patient should be uh, managed much better earlier. After that, what we need to do we need to manage the patient help for help syndrome it's very important to administer the steroids and um, to give her the platelet infusion to correct the low platelet count before delivery before c-section whether it's normal delivery or c-section whatever it is and uh, antihypertensives they are not given until and unless the blood pressure of the woman goes beyond 160 100 because if we, our aim is not to decrease the blood pressure. If we suddenly decrease the blood pressure to a very lower level, the circulation of the mother that is passing through placenta and going to the fetus will be hampered. That blood supply will be disturbed and it will lead to the fetal death. So our aim is not to decrease the blood pressure, but to maintain it at a, as a, at a very proper level that is safe for the mother and at which the passage of blood from the mother to the baby is not disturbed. So, and if somebody asks, what is the curative treatment for that? The curative treatment, because pregnancy-induced hypertension is because of pregnancy. So, it, it can only be cured when the pregnancy is gone. So, the curative treatment of PIH is the termination of pregnancy. And we try to uh, deliver the baby uh, at 36 weeks and not less than this because we want the baby to deliver at a high average so that the baby could also survive. Otherwise, you know, this condition has also very devastating effects on the fetus as well because the fetus, if the blood supply to uh, the fetus is cut down or decreased, then the fetus, you know, it uh, faces a problem of intrauterine growth retardation and there could be IUD. And if somehow the fetus uh, survives, there are still high chances of asphyxia. So taking all these things in mind, we have to manage our patient with PIH on these grounds. Thank you.